So, okay, got a few questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, first question, when is your first CBT Nugget series coming out? Well, um, good news. It's already out, actually. Uh, we're, we're doing it now in modules, so we release it in little small modules at a time. Um, I'm going through dial plans right now, and I just re I released my first two uh, dial plan modules. So if you're a CBT Nugget subscriber, go for it. It's up. And um, I actually received another question on uh, Twitter, and this is related to my, my YouTube channel. When are, you, when are you making more YouTube videos, and are, are you still going to make YouTube videos? The answer is yes. Um, it's been a bit slow because I've been starting with CBT, and it's a, it's a lot of stuff to get used to, but I do plan to still make videos, so don't worry about that. They are coming. Anyways, let's see, you got another question here. Um, so, Flavio said that the uh, CCIE collab has changed completely, and it looks like you don't even need hardware anymore, except for a robust server. Do you think CCMP collab is moving the same way? Yes, I do. Um, and I was kind of curious, and I, I always, when I see like the CCIE being updated, I always ask, hey, does that mean the CCMP is gonna be updated? And I'll, I'll ask uh, some guys at Cisco, haven't heard anything yet, but I do anticipate that to be happening maybe within the next few years. And yeah, everything's moving virtual, I feel, especially for the exams. Um, so I, I, I hope that comes sooner than later, because right now, I mean, like this whole the whole purpose of this webinar is how to cheaply lab things. It's, it becomes difficult to lab things when you have to get all this hardware that normally you'd have to be a company to be able to buy and afford and get access to. So yeah, I definitely think that's coming. So let me get another question here. Um, someone asked, as a partner, I've got access to dCloud and DevNet, which do you recommend? I say use both. I, I've used both and it's really cool. I think um, with, with uh, DevNet, you can get access within 15 minutes. You can get a CUCM, I am in presence. You can get a, um, you know, the, the Server 2012 setup, and it's so quick. But for like a really big, robust lab, when you want to work with Expressway, MRA, and all that really amazing stuff, um, yeah, you want to go DevNet or I mean uh, DCloud. And like I said, it's it's mainly for people who are you know the, demonstrating this for a customer. You get to play with that, and you don't have to, you know, be actually doing work. You can even say, "I'm doing it to learn something." When you're requesting it, and they just give it right to you, so it's it's awesome. Um, any thoughts on Broadsoft? So, for those of you who don't know, um, Cisco acquired Broadsoft earlier. I think earlier this year or late last year, and it's all about uh, cloud-based PSTN, SIP, and all that. I think that's where it's going. Um, Two of my biggest uh, projects I've had in the past couple of years has been migrating legacy uh, PRI, PSTN kind of stuff to the SIP uh, implementations. And I, I definitely think we're moving that way. And, you know, with, um, with Cisco investing in uh, all these programmability with Spark and uh, Spark Bot and you got Tropo, I think we are slowly moving that direction. I mean, you see SIP everywhere. SIP is the de facto... Uh, uh, PSTN uh, we're using now, so that's that's what we're we're dealing with. Um, then we have Louise asking uh, or Lewis, how much time does it take to prepare for the CCMP exam? Um, I I hear this all the time, and it's it's going to be subjective. It's completely up to you. I always tell people if you are if you've got a lot of time in your hands, I'm saying like let's say you got a full time job and you are coming home and you're studying for four or five hours a night and that's that's a lot I mean that's a lot of training that's that's sitting there eating dinner while you're studying um, I think you could probably knock each exam out within three to four months and that that really depends on where you're at I mean if you if you do collaboration every day that could be a very short amount of time for you I know if, if you're if you're at the uh, workplace and you're constantly troubleshooting CUCM issues and you're you know creating a new calling search space partition and you're troubleshooting stuff and yeah, yeah you, you can probably do it pretty quickly. You just got to learn a few things that you, that, you know, the fine details that exams want you to know. Uh, but if you don't have access, it could take you a bit and I always tell people don't, don't feel guilty about it taking longer for you than someone else. Everybody's different. Just focus on learning the content as best you can. Um, and, and you know, I, I started this whole voice thing from Jeremy Chara watching his stuff and I always got this from him. If you don't, if you don't love it, you're not going to you're not going to do well if you don't already love what you're studying. So my my advice is embrace it. Just fall in love with collaboration, have fun, lab as much as you can and don't worry about how long it's going to take. I mean, I definitely think you should plan out your study schedule and try to stick to one, but if it takes you a bit longer to get a t uh, a topic down or something, don't don't beat yourself up. It's it's a journey. It really is. Um 
Next question, any plans on Contact Center Express videos? You know, I, I would love to do some actually. Uh, I, I love Contact Center Express or UCCX. And for those of you who don't know what that is, you know, it's um, Cisco's implementation of a call center type environment. Um, you'll actually see that in the uh, CCIE exam, not so much the CCMP, but yeah, it's, it's where you get to script together. Uh, uh, it basically is programming for voice nerds. <laughs> so it's, it's really, really fun. Um, I don't have any firm plans just yet, but I have uh, been kicking it around with CBT people, so maybe soon, but I can't promise anything. Um, when can we review this webinar? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it'll be up within a few days, but I'll, I'll check with my guys. Don't, don't hold me to that. Um, what PowerEdge server do I have? I have a PowerEdge R610. It's a Dell PowerEdge. Um, well, that's, that's the Dell brand. Uh, it's nothing special. Um, it's got a terabyte hard drive. It's pretty standard. Uh, but any any homebrew PC will do the job for you, so don't don't worry about that. Uh, and you, like I said, you can find these. Now I have to say, getting a rack mount server like it's a full rack mount server, uh, one U. But you have to you have to have a family that's or a wife or a husband that's okay with you having a huge rack mount equipment in your closet because it's literally sitting underneath my my clothes in my closet right now, and it it's thankfully it's quieter than my my Cisco UCS was. Uh, but it, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, let's see, got to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And let's see, I got a next question. Um, just setting up VMware with 60 day demo version. Can you take a snapshot and extend the period without having to rebuild your lab? You know, I, when working with Cisco, uh, and, and, and working everything, they always say, uh, do not take snapshots. It'll break everything. And that used to be the whole whole shtick they would give me when talking about doing backups. They just want you to do the backup through the uh, disaster recovery module. But uh, yeah, you can absolutely do a snapshot. If you've got your environment to where you think this is the, the place you want to start off on with every lab, yeah, you can do a snapshot, no problem, and you can extend that. Let's see. Um, actually, I think I got a question coming in from Twitter. Let me see here. Oh no, it was just somebody talking about the new Jabber. Which, by the way, just randomly throwing this out there. Jabber... Uh, I, I love to see that Cisco is still working on Jabber because when I when I heard they were talking about Spark, I'm like, ah, oh, they've got Spark now. Are they gonna like throw away Jabber? Well, no, that's not the case. And with uh, CUCM 12, which is our newest version of CUCM, um, they've been working on Jabber, and now Jabber has multi-line support and some other cool features. So that's that's amazing. I've been people have been bugging me for years for Jabber multi-line support, so now you can have more than one line on Jabber. Which that's another thing too. Um, if there's no more questions, I'll just kind of go into this. With uh, with labbing, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I need I need a phone. I need to find a third party SIP phone or whatever." Um, I use Jabber a lot with my environment. Um, I'll deploy Jabber on my my cell phone because you can get it free from the App Store, right? I mean, if you got an Android or you have an iPhone, you can put Jabber on there, register it as a cell phone device in uh, CUCM. There, there's a phone. Then I'll have it on my kid's tablet, and we'll do video calls back and forth between the room. It's really fun. But uh, yeah. It, you don't have to like be a stickler on, oh, I need a hardware phone. Don't worry about that. And, um, oh, not a question, but I would love to see some material on UCCX. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> I, I know it's impossible to find. I like what you just said, Chris. Um, I've had the hardest time finding UCCX training and, and good documentation. I mean, more often than not, you'll just spend time going through an official Cisco document, which... Yeah, a little little dry, <laughs> and then um, finding some some uh, good examples of how to do all the random things. Yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's it's so fun. Uh, let's see. Um, thanks for the positivity. Uh, you're welcome. Was that Daniel? Yeah, Daniel. And uh, then we have another question from Lalo. Uh, what is your preferred method of taking notes? You know, I kind of have. I'm, I'm kind of random, and I do whatever. See, I. With the way I study, I don't st I don't stick to one method. I try to mix it up so I don't keep myself uh, too um, stagnant. I like to be like always moving. So sometimes I'll get out a good old piece of paper or you know a manila pad and I'll write down notes. And um, you know people always say the benefit of writing something down is that it connects your you know your motion of writing something with your brain and helps you remember it better. And yeah, I, I do I do think that's true. So what I'll do uh, when I'm really hitting like a complicated topic is I'll go through, I'll write my notes, and then I'll put a check mark if I know I want to review that or I have to memorize that. Like if it's like a, a codec question or you know, uh, just random questions that are I know it will probably be a test question. So I'll put a check mark or like an empty checkbox next to it. 
And then I'll go back through and create flashcards off of those little notes. So I'll go through, oh, there's a checkbox there. Let me check that off. Create a, a note in my, uh, or a flashcard in my Anki flashcard deck, which if you don't know what Anki is, it's a great spaced repetition uh, flashcard uh, program that will throw a question at you um, as soon as you're about to forget it. So for example, if I'm, uh, if I do a flashcard, I'm like, okay, the G729 codec, it's this, you know, it's eight uh, kilobits per second. And then it'll ask me the same question again three days later, right when I'm about to forget it. If I get it right, it'll then ask me 10 days later. So it puts that, that term, that, that little snippet of information in your long-term memory uh, over time. So it's, it's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, got a question from Kurt. Will Jabber handle an IPCC queue line and be able to log into Finesse to take calls? So what he's asking is, can Jabber be used for UCCX to uh, log into Finesse, which is Finesse is their little interface for UCCX. So this is kind of turning into a UCCX little thing. This is great. <laughs> I love UCCX. Um, the answer is yes. Um, I think it was UCCX 11.5 that they finally introduced and support. I mean, you could always do it. It was just never supported. But I think they finally support it, supported it in 11.5. And yeah, I had a whole call center full of people who were using Jabber as their sole phone. Now, I did run it. I don't know if this has been fixed, but um, if they're going to be using Jabber as their phone, make sure it's a PC that's pretty good. Uh, because we ran into an issue where this call center had computers that were just not the best, not very fast. And um, <laughs> they, were, they were having their calls like to start to bleh, 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 audio issues. Because the CPU is spiking, that's going to affect the you know how the how Jabber processes the processes the audio. So be careful with that. But yeah, it's totally awesome, totally supported. Uh, it's it's really fun. Uh, Coding Ghost said, "Great webinar." Well, you are welcome. And um, then we have another question: How do you manage to find study time with the family? That is a fantastic question. Actually, I think I mentioned this on one of my YouTube videos, and it, it's a it's a struggle. Like, there's no definitive answer. All I know is that I. This is one thing I always tell people. I try to work around my family schedule. So if they're sitting there watching TV, I'll, you know, I'll check on my wife first and I'll say, hey, is it okay if I just sit here with uh, earbuds in and watch a few CBT Nugget videos? Is that cool? And we'll sit there and watch TV and I'll have it in or I'll sit there and play a quick game of Rocket League with my kids while I'm listening to some training from Keith Barker. You, you kind of have to work it in. Or if you're going to a, you know, a soccer game or a gymnastics meet, like my daughter was doing gymnastics uh, last year and if you ever have a kid that does gymnastics, I mean, you take them to the practice and there's like a whole slew of people that I think they spend all day there just watching their kid doing gymnastics because it's a it's a full commitment. Just bring your stuff. I'm, I'm always known for bringing my backpack wherever I go and it's kind of, they think I'm weird, but I take it wherever I go because a family event, things might, you know, wind down or they might go for a walk or something and I'm left to myself, hey, I can, I can squeeze in some quick study time. So the way I see it with studying with families, I'm always in study mode. I'm not going to worry about that. And whenever I can squeeze in study time, I do. And that's why I use my flashcard app on my phone. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm waiting in line at the grocery store. Uh, I'm not going to talk to anybody right now because <laughs> I'm super socially awkward. So I'll just pull out my phone and I'll go through a few flashcards. Uh, let's see. Um, so this question is not related to collab per se, but it's uh, Lewis going through uh, CCNA Cyber Ops next week. Oh, he's just saying thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome, Lewis. Um, you guys inspire me, so I think that's awesome. Now, what was that flashcard app again Daniel's at, or Dan's asking? It's called Anki. Now, uh, so Anki is like the original space repetition app. It's a free app on uh, Mac and Windows, and I think even Linux, actually. Um, so it's called Anki, A-N-K-I. If you want the, the iOS app or the Android app, I believe it does cost money. That's how they make their money, but totally worth it. Um, and then I think Quizlet which they have like a monthly um, uh, charge for their, their service, but they do also the spaced repetition. But yeah, I cannot say enough about the spaced repetition method. It's fantastic. Um, and another question, is a POTS line needed to build a voice lab? You know, I, I actually looked at that. I'm like, okay, how can I simulate or emulate a POTS line? And I don't think it's that important. I just, I, I'm not messing with it actually, to be honest. Um, I think there's enough with SIP. Um, I've dealt, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, so flashcard app, just again for everyone, that's Anki A N K I. It's fantastic. And then um, and then another person, uh, thanks for the great webinar. You are welcome, sir. I'm, I'm glad you guys all came in to uh, chat with me. And uh, I'll just kind of talk around for a little bit and, and while uh, more questions come in. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that this is 
this is collaboration. I hope that, um, what I love about collaboration, and it's, I think it's one of those rare certifications that you do need a bit of experience to start doing it, or you, you don't even care about it until you start working for a company that actually has it. Because if I were to have not been working at a company that had Cisco phones, I wouldn't have cared about it. I would have gone for my networking search, like CCNA, routing and switching, maybe security, data center. But because I worked at a company with collaboration, I thought, hey, I didn't know there's a whole certification for it. Let me do that. And it opened up a ton of doors. It took me farther, faster than I thought it could ever. I mean, it was, it's amazing. It's, it's a rare certification. It's a rare skill. Uh, I know, it, even though I'm not looking for a job now, because I've got the best job ever, uh, like last year, the year before, I, I'm always getting calls for things. It's a rare skill. So if you're going for collaboration, man, do not be discouraged if you hit a wall or something, or if you hear, you're looking on Twitter, you hear people saying, oh, networking's dying, all this. No, no, no. This is a, a unique and an awesome skill. Stick with it. Get your CCMP. Get your CCNA. It's 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 a fun fun place. Let's see. Um, oh, Chris Warren. He said he uses a uh, Magic Jack for his pots line. I actually was googling around to see if I could do that. I'm gonna try that now, Chris. I I'm gonna I'm gonna incorporate that into my uh, nuggets. So thank you for the advice. I was like, okay, how can I emulate this? You know, you, you don't. No one has pots lines anymore at their house. Uh, even if you do get a line in, it's it's part of your cable package and it's all digital anyway. Um, let's see, do you need previous certifications as a CCNA or else to achieve the CCMP cert? Uh, I think what you're asking is, do you need, um, do you need the CCNA to jump into CCMP routing, switching or collaboration? And the answer is yes. The only certification that does not require any prerequisites would be like the entry level certs, like the, um, well, CCNA really. And then, um, the CCIE for some reason, because they assume that if you are brave enough to jump in and take that exam, then you don't need any proof <laughs> if you're going to pay that price. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely recommend going through Jeremy Chara's CCNA collaboration track, uh, and then jumping into my CCMP track when you are ready. Uh, you know, and what, one thing I always did is, uh, when I was working in collaboration is that sometimes CCNA collaboration stuff doesn't, doesn't cover, uh, what you're doing on the job that day. So I'll jump in and, and watch a few CCMP videos cause it goes more in depth, like partitions and calling search spaces or creating a good route plan or. God, you know, E164 DOM plans. I mean, the, the biggest struggle for me when I was in a real company doing real stuff is I couldn't find enough training on real life dial plans. Like, okay, we're running out of extensions. You got a four digit extension. It's overlapping with Bob over here. How do I solve that? We already have this massive dial plan implemented and my company's growing at a massive rate. How do I fix it? So I do my best to try and address that in the uh, in my collaboration, uh, CCP collaboration training. So I, yeah, that I try to put as much as I've experienced all the pain points into my training. So I want to prepare you for the exam, but I also want you to be so ready for real life. So that's pretty much it. So I think we are maybe winding down. I don't see any more questions coming in. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking time to hang out with me. This has been awesome. Uh, my coffee cup's empty, so I'm assuming yours is. Um, so check it out on CCMP collaboration on CBT nuggets and, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube network Chuck. If you have any questions, I try to answer as many as I can on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you know where to find me anyways. Thanks guys. And, um, take care.